Hi, my name is Ben Roy. I'm an intern here with Fredericksburg and Spotsylvania National Military Park. And today I'm out here on the Spotsylvania battlefield talking about Upton's attack, which occurred on May 10th, 1864, when Colonel Emery S. Upton, a West Point graduate, led 12 chosen regiments in an attack here that shattered the Confederate line. Although initially successful, the attack was turned back by the frantic Confederate counterattacks and forced to return to its starting point. But today, I want to talk about just one group of Union volunteers that fought here during Upton's attack, the 5th Maine Company I. And I'm dressed as they would have appeared in May of 1864. I'm wearing a blue wool uniform, and in my knapsack I carry a wool blanket, a rubberized gum blanket, and a canvas shelter hat. On my belt, I carry a cartridge box for ammunition and a bayonet for my musket. And in my haversack and canteen, I carry water and rations. On my hat, I wear the red Greek cross of the 1st Division of the Federal 6th Corps. The only original part of the equipment that I have today is this musket, which is a Springfield model rifled musket, which was manufactured by the E. Robinson Company in upstate New York in 1863. By May of 1864, the men of the 5th Maine Company I had been fighting and carrying muskets like this one for three years continuously. The men of the 5th Maine Company I were still sustained by the same patriotic motives that compelled them to enlist in the spring of 1861. Clark S. Edwards was shingling the roof of his home in the spring of 1861 when a neighbor came and visited him and told him that the rebels had fired on Fort Sumter. Without hesitation, Edwards immediately climbed down, started walking to the Bethel Post Office to raise a company of volunteers from Bethel and the surrounding town. That group would eventually become the 5th Maine Company I, and they were supported by their entire community. And before they left for the seat of war in 1861, they were addressed by Emma Clara Gaines on behalf of the patriotic women of Bethel. She said, quote, go forth and sustain our government and her ballot box, that foundation stone whereon is built the glorious fabric of free government. Let it not become a stupendous failure of self-government and a byword and scorn among the nations of Europe and the world." End quote. The 5th Maine would fight in every major engagement that the Army of the Potomac took part in and would gain a reputation as an elite fighting unit. And for that reason, it was one of the chosen 12, a dozen hand-picked regiments that were selected by Federal High Command to make a special attack here on the Mule Shoe Salient during the battle for Spotsylvania Courthouse. Under the command of Colonel Emery S. Upton, the Chosen 12 would make a column-style attack, with three regiments in front and the rest massed in depth behind them. Each regiment numbered between three to 500 men by this point in the war, and Upton was attacking with roughly 5,000 volunteers. The 5th Maine was one of the front three regiments standing on the far left, and it would be exposed to enemy fire from the moment it emerged from the tree line behind me to when it surged over the Confederate earthworks here, where I'm standing now. When the attack began, the 5th Maine surged across the field behind me and over the, Confe over the Confederate earthworks, falling on its defenders. They would fight fiercely and break the Confederate line here. Although Federal attacks elsewhere on the Mule Shoe Salient failed, and Confederate leadership was able to push elements of seven different brigades into the breach, forcing Upton's men back across the earthworks where they fought face to face until dark, when Upton's force was ordered to return to its starting place. When they arrived there, men of the Vermont Brigade who participated in the attack reported sobbing in anger and frustration. The casualties they sustained were very heavy. The 5th Maine went into the attack with 17 officers and lost 11 of them, killed, wounded, and captured. And the regiment itself suffered over half its number in casualties. The effects on morale were devastating. And Colonel Clark S. Edwards, now commanding the regiment, wrote, quote, we at once went back to our shelter tents. The little sleep we had for our hearts were too full of grief and sorrow for the poor fellows who had fallen. When the camp became still, I took a candle and moved quietly from tent to tent, many of which I found vacant while others had but one occupant." End quote. 
The tragedy of what happened to the 5th Maine was amplified by the fact that they only had scarcely more than a month left in their term of service. On June 23, 1864, Company I mustered out of service and began the long journey back to Bethel. Of the original 50 who left Bethel in the spring of 1861, only seven returned with the colors of the regiment, and only one of them had been physically untouched by the war. But the scale of this suffering and sacrifice did not dim the men's vision of the meaning of their service. Clark Edwards would write long after the war, quote, our memories are filled with the recollections of the terrible scenes then witnessed. As great as was the sacrifice of life and of money, it was not in vain. All that we are today as a nation and as a people may be attributed to the success of the boys in blue, end quote. Out here on the Spotsylvania battlefield, we have a chance to connect the stories of groups of men like the 5th Maine Company I to the experiences and events that inspired the creation of this park. And we can take into ourselves a small portion of those experiences and events and understand them and know that they were supported by their communities at home and their families, friends, men, women, and children. <laughs>